Hello, I'm Jeff Stahoviak with Sunbelt University. We're here at PC61 in Jacksonville, Florida. We're going to be demonstrating the proper inspection, maintenance, and uh, how to put together a scaffolding. The scaffolding we're going to be looking at today is what we call a utility tower. Uh, it's made by Bill Jacks. It's uh, probably one of the most popular scaffolds out there, uh, used by several different types of contractors and several types of construction situations. And we'll be talking about that as we put the scaffold together today. Okay, first we want to discuss some of the parts and pieces of the scaffolding. Oftentimes customers when they call in for this scaffolding will call it a baker scaffolding. That's a very common name uh, for this type of scaffolding. Uh, it's described uh, as a utility tower. Uh, again, usually six foot high, two foot wide, uh, usually on casters. Although instead of casters you may have base plates. One of the first things we want to look at when we're putting this together uh, or renting it is the casters because sometimes there are problems with the casters. The casters have to be in good condition, uh, roll freely, uh, the locking mechanism has to work properly and lock the caster so it can't roll, uh, and there has to be a locking pin in the caster so when you put it in the frame leg uh, the caster can't fall out. So That's one of the first things we want to look at. As we uh, put this in the frame, you simply take the pin off, slide it in, lining up the holes, insert the pin, locking mechanism, and the caster is inserted in the frame. And you would do that on all four legs. Before you leave here, lock the caster, and we'll tell you why you do that uh, a little bit later as we construct the scaffolding. A helpful tip on renting this type of utility tower or baker scaffolding is the pins that go with the casters, keeping them together. So when you get them back from a rental, make sure the pins are already inserted in, a, in the caster before you put them back in the rack. Next we're going to demonstrate how to put the utility tower or baker scaffold together. First thing we want to do is make sure all four casters are locked. It'll make it a lot easier to stand the frame up and it won't roll away on you. So we walk to the end of one of the six foot frames and we stand it up. I want to put a little angle on it. We're going to take the truss assembly, side frame assembly, stand that up. There's a trigger mechanism here. We're going to grab and pull the pin out, spring loaded. Put a little angle on the frame, put the truss assembly on move the truss assembly up or down and have the pin lock in the frame. Make sure the pin locks in the frame. It's not important at this point where it locks in. Uh, it's important though that the pin does lock and uh, next we'll uh, put up the next ladder uh, frame assembly. We're going to show you a close-up of the locking mechanism on this uh, utility tower. It's this spring-loaded pin that goes into the frame and once it's in the frame you simply turn this around push it in and hook the hook on this piece right here. That way the pin cannot be pulled out inadvertently or by accident. Uh, you have to unlock it in order to adjust the truss up or down or to disassemble it. Lift the second ladder frame into place. Pick up the truss assembly. Line up the frame with the truss assembly. Again, locking it in place and that section's complete. Next we're going to install the second and final uh, truss assembly. I'm going to pick it up, get it positioned. This one we can set exactly at the height we want to work. Again, knock it into place, make sure the pin inserts. Once the pin inserts, lock it in place. Same procedure on the other side. Make sure you're lining up with the same holes. It'll make it a lot easier. Once it's in place, lock the pin in place and that truss assembly is installed. And now for our final adjustment on the interior uh, truss assembly we did uh, earlier. We're going to move this up to the same level as this. Note what hole you need to go into. How many holes are showing on this side so we get it the same level. We can unlock both pins. We can simply on each side remove the pins, slide the assembly up to where the other one is, lock that pin in place, lock this pin in place, 
lock the pin, and we got a required working height. This is the platform lock. This locks the platform in place so it can't be popped out of uh, place inadvertently or by wind or anything like that. Uh, it does two purposes. First, we want to get it out of the way when we install the plank. And second of all, when we do put it on top of the plank, it assures that the plank's seated properly in the slot on the side frame. Now the last part of the assembly is installing the working deck. It has hand holes in it. We want to utilize those. And from the side, we simply pick up the deck. We can place it on top of the scaffolding, set it down on the truss assemblies. Then we want to move it into place, make sure it seats properly, and then install the platform locks on both sides. This is the completed utility tower Baker style scaffolding ready for use. Next we're going to show you how to install guardrails on this utility tower Baker style scaffolding. Many job sites now require guardrails on these type of scaffolds and uh, some of the thresholds might be a six foot height or a ten foot height. Some industrial sites might require guardrails no matter what height. So this is a very important component to the scaffolding. We're going to show you how they work and how they install. This is basically a six foot guardrail panel and on one side of it has a swinging guardrail gate. Installed on the guardrail panel is a top rail, a mid rail, and a tow board. And when you install this, basically you've installed two sides of the scaffolding on a four sided scaffolding. The other one is just like this. It gets installed on the other side. And the guardrail gate will end up over here with the guardrail over on that side. We'll show you how that's done uh, as we put it together. A little trick for installing the panel so you don't have to reach down so far to grab it off the ground is to take the panel on the guardrail side and hang it on the pin of the frame. Set the other side of the guardrail panel on the ground and make sure it's secure and not going to fall off as you climb the scaffolding. Another important safety tip to remember when climbing any ladder, and what we're looking at here is a scaffold frame with a ladder in it, when you're climbing the ladder to always maintain the three-point contact. Make sure your shoes, boots are cleaned off of any mud, oil, or grease so you won't slip. Make sure the rungs are clean as well, and always maintain a three-point contact. That's going to mean two hands, one foot, or two feet, one hand, always on the ground or on the frames, contacting the frame. This way, in case a foot slips or a hand slips, you still have two points of contact and you shouldn't fall. Once we've climbed up on the scaffolding, another tip, the pin locks will be required to lock the guardrails into place in this position, we need four of them. We've placed them on top of the scaffold so they're easy to access. We can put them in place while we're up here. We won't forget them. Next, we're going to grab the guardrail panel. And install into the slots. Once they're in the slots, we're going to install the pins. We may have to lift up to line the holes up. and install the pins in place. And now we're going to install the second rail just like we did the first. Now we've got both guardrail panels installed. They're pin locked in on all four corners. We've put the back gate in place. We're going to show you how to close the other gate. This gate closes and if there's a pin here with a little drop lock mechanism, you put that hole through the pin, it locks in place, and we've got a completely guardrail and tow board rolling scaffold. Here we are with our finished rolling scaffold tower ready for use. Remember that OSHA strictly governs the use of scaffolding and the construction and erection and dismantling of scaffolding. Make sure that a competent person is involved in erecting or dismantling a scaffold such as this. Another OSHA requirement to remember is that every scaffold has to be inspected before each work shift by a competent person. We're now going to show you some of the things to look for as you do a walk around inspection on this style scaffolding or rolling scaffold tower. I like to start at the base and in this case we've got casters, rolling casters in place. We want to make sure number one that they're pinned in place so they can't fall out accidentally in case you drive uh, or roll the rolling scaffold into a hole. 
Uh, we want to make sure the caster's locked, meaning right now this caster can swivel and it can roll. We want to lock it. That should prevent it from rolling and prevent it from swiveling. Remember that any time you're on a rolling scaffold, OSHA requires that casters be locked so the scaffold cannot roll while you're on the scaffolding. So we're going to look at all four casters as we walk around the scaffold. We've inspected all four casters. They're in good working order. All of them lock in place and the pins are in place. Next, we're going to move up the frame looking for any damage to the frame or the rungs. Moving up to the locking mechanism on the truss. Make sure the lock is in place in the hole and it's locked here. All four of them have to be locked and engaged. Okay, we've checked all four locking mechanisms here for the pins. They're, in, they're engaged. Next, right next to that is the locks, drop locks for the guardrail panels. Make sure all four of those are engaged. And also, while we're here, we're going to make sure the plank is engaged properly, seated properly, and that the locking mechanism holding the plank down in place is engaged as well. We've checked the locking mechanism on the plank, making sure the plank is properly seated. We're moving up to the guardrail panels, make sure they're seated, pinned in, making sure they're in good shape, tow boards are in good shape guardrail panels are not bent and that the gates can close and lock properly. Once we've looked at everything on top of the scaffolding, guardrails and guardrail panels and they're all in good shape and in working order, this completes the walk around inspection of a rolling utility tower or oftentimes called a baker scaffolding. Another very important safety concern while building or working on any type of scaffold is the proper personal protective equipment called PPE. Some things that might be required on the job site and you might consider requiring on your job site when you're working on scaffolding would be a hard hat. We have overhead hazards. We've got things that can fall on your head while you're working on the scaffolding. A hard hat can protect you from that. Safety glasses, very important. Safety glasses uh, do several things, but most importantly when you're erecting the scaffolding, things can fall off the scaffolding, off of plank, dust, dirt, and get in your eyes and that's not a good thing. Safety glasses will protect you from that. Most job sites require these two basic personal protective equipment pieces uh, no matter what job site you're on. Another very important uh, PPE equipment is steel-toed work boots. At Sunbelt we require all our employees to wear steel-toed work boots. Again working with scaffolding uh, these frames weigh 20-30 pounds a piece dropping one of them accidentally hitting your toe uh, can do some severe damage. So steel toe work boots work well in protecting your feet. And then lastly, something else you might consider on a job site is gloves to protect your hands. When working with scaffolding, uh, there's sharp edges, plank have slivers, and gloves can protect your hands from any of those type of hazards. So it's an important aspect to consider when using or building scaffolding. This would uh, pretty much complete the personal protective equipment. In some cases, uh, building scaffolds over six feet high in some plants and some job sites, other personal protective equipment might be required, such as a harness, a shock absorbing lanyard, some sort of anchorage point, um, earplugs, uh, respirators. So do consider other PPE dependent on the hazards that might be at your job site or what the job site might require. This completes our video of the proper use, setup, inspection, and maintenance of utility style, style scaffolding, a rolling scaffold, often called a baker scaffold. We hope that this video helps you use scaffolding in a safe manner and erect it in a safe manner. On behalf of Sunbelt University, we thank you for viewing the video.